These are my top six favorite cenotes in Tulum, Mexico. Now, before we start listing and ranking cenotes, what exactly is a cenote? Simply put, a cenote is a bit of a sinkhole, which is formed when the bedrock made of limestone collapses and exposes the groundwater beneath. And this is fresh water, so it essentially makes for some really freaking cool swimming pools that are especially found in the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. Now, in order to rank these six different cenotes, I came up with a bit of a rating system that'll include five different categories and they'll get a score out of whatever number. So the first criteria or first category is just going to be the beauty. Simply put, it's just going to be the visual attractiveness of the cenote. So things such as the setting surrounding it, the color of the water, maybe the little details and nooks and crannies that you can just look at the cenote and be like, wow, that's a really beautiful thing to just see, period. I'll be ranking this out of five. Five being the best, one being the worst. Now the second category is going to be what I call adventure, but kind of encapsulates thrill and interaction as well. This will be out of five as well. And things that can play into this will be maybe a bit of a cliff jump, if it has a rope swing, if it has different cool little areas to explore that are hard to get to, maybe like a little cave or a little passageway that's a little tight. Just kind of the thrill and interactions that you can get with the cenote besides just looking at it or just hopping in to cool off. Now going a little bit further, we're going to talk about snorkeling. Now, first and foremost, snorkeling is something you should do at all cenotes whenever possible. Now snorkeling will also be ranked based out of five, with five being the best, one being the worst, same thing there. And this can include things such as the beautiful rays of sunlight you see in the water, the different wildlife that you can try and see, and also just how much fun is it to snorkel based on little passageways or areas that you can navigate or just really cool sites underwater where it opens up, yada, yada, yada. We'll get more into the specifics as we rank these. Now the last two are important, but a little less interesting. First one out of these last two I'll go over is going to be the price. I'll be ranking this based out of a three score system. Three meaning it's really cheap, one meaning it's really expensive. The average price I would say is going to be about $10 entry fee. So if it's higher than $10, it's gonna be get a one. If it's less than $10, it'll get a three. And lastly, this is going to be busyness, meaning how many people do I generally expect to find at the cenote? This is also gonna be based on a three point system with one, meaning there's so many people, it definitely played a part in my enjoyment. Two, it's going to be, there was a decent amount of people, but it didn't really bother me. And three, meaning there wasn't enough people to almost make it feel like I had it to myself. There's plenty of room to explore without even being concerned with other people around me. So now with all of these five categories, the total score will be 21, and we'll see which one gets the highest score out of 21. With that being said, let's jump into Cenote number six. So coming in at number six on this list is going to be Cenote Calavera. Now, Cenote Calavera is located only about 20 minutes from the town center of Tulum, meaning it's super easy and accessible to get to if you don't have a car, which is why I visited it first personally. Now, the beauty of Cenote Calavera is undoubtedly for me a four out of five because it is a semi-open cenote, but also has a cave sort of appearance with a bunch of little holes in, which we'll talk about here in a second, which is why it's called calavera, which means skull, because it kind of resembles a bit of a skull shape. It's right in the jungle, really beautiful, some wildlife around, really visually appealing, especially when the sun's higher later in the day and you can see that beautiful sort of aqua color water in the cenote. Now for the adventure category, this also for me gets a four out of five based on these openings I was talking about. Now, the really cool thing about these openings is you can jump through them. Some are wider and narrower than others, but it feels a bit of an adrenaline experience. It's a little intimidating, especially because it's like a dark cave below where you can hear bats flying around and all of that. Super fun, great little adventure there. There's also a little swing at the bottom of the cenote as well, and you can swim and snorkel and explore a little bit inside as well. Now we're gonna talk about the snorkeling because so far you're like, well, you have two four out of fives, so how can this possibly be last on the list? I would personally give the snorkeling a two out of five for a few different reasons. Number one, the water's pretty dark here. Unless it's later in the day, you might see some of those sunbeams coming through the water, but the, also the space to snorkel isn't that massive because the cenote itself is pretty darn small. And if it's later in the day, there's more people, which again, we'll talk about later, which can kind of hamper your ability to move around and snorkel. So I'd give it a below average, two out of five for the snorkeling. Now price, this is another area where the cenote doesn't shine because the entry fee for the cenote per person was 250 pesos, which is about 12 and a half dollars. So based on my ranking scale, it's above average for the price, meaning it's one out of three for the price. And also I was talking about how later in the day, it's harder to maybe snorkel around and jump around because 
it gets pretty darn busy. This cenote is not a secret anymore. It's also pretty close by to Tulum and it has a really cool Instagrammable location. So the word is out. Maybe I'm adding to that. I'm sorry if I am, but I'm just trying to help out everyone watching here. So based on the busyness, it definitely impeded later in the day get there early, always get there early for cenotes, but it impeded my ability to have the best possible time based on having to wait to swim around. Sometimes you'd want to jump in the holes and there'd be a person at the bottom of it, so you have to wait there, or you want to take a picture and everyone else is trying to get their Instagram picture too. So based on that, I would have to give this a one out of three for busyness. All in all, take all those scores and combine them together and we're getting a 12.5 out of 21 for Cenote Calavera. Great cenote, but scored the lowest on this list, all those categories considered. So moving on to number five on this list is going to be the Gran Cenote, or Grand Cenote. Do I do a Spanish accent or do I make it English speaker friendly? I don't know, I'm always caught in the middle in these videos. Anyway, this is another cenote that's pretty close to the town center of Tulum. It's located just a little bit further on the same road as Cenote Calavera, but it's about a 35 minute bike ride from the town center or about maybe a 10 minute drive or so. Now the beauty of the cenote is outstanding. I would definitely give it a 4.5 out of five, near perfection. The water gets really pretty. You have nice, lots of nice different blue colors. You have a bit of a cave system with these stalagmites, I believe they're called, those really imposing rock structures and there's two different access points where it kind of looks like an open air cenote but also a cave cenote so it's that semi-open aesthetic beautiful 4.5 out of 5 near perfection now moving on to adventure and thrill i would personally give this cenote a 3.5 out of 5 because it definitely has more adventure than average for example there's a bit of an underwater passageway that you can swim throughout which is a little bit intimidating because the lighting is very limited and you can't really necessarily see everything around you, but it's a bit of a fun adventure. There's also a little bit of a cave section which you can swim into and check out. That being said, there's no jumps or ropes or anything that might induce your adrenaline uh, spiking a little bit more, but it definitely has some adventure. Not the craziest I've been to, so I think 3.5 out of 5 is a pretty fair score for this category. Now moving on to snorkeling. In my opinion, this is where Gran Cenote really shines. I give it a 5.5. <laughs> No, I give it a five out of five. So perfect snorkeling score for a few different reasons. One, when the sun starts to shine in and it does this pretty early in the morning too, you see these gorgeous sunlight rays, which are totally magical, simply put. And the wildlife while you're snorkeling and swimming around is excellent. There's plenty of these freshwater turtles, which you see, which are so cool. They'll swim kind of close to you, or you can see them deep below. And speaking of deep below, in some areas you can see where the water drops off or the, the bottom of the water floor drops off and it gets super deep and you can see these menacing, imposing stalagmites. Feels like you're snorkeling and exploring a whole different world, even talking about the little cave system which connects to the other opening in the cenote. All that being considered, can't give it anything besides a five out of five for snorkeling. Now again, this is where the cenote takes a little bit of a hit in my opinion because we're gonna talk about the price. Now the Grand Cenote maybe has for good reason, is the most expensive cenote that I've visited, clocking in at 300 pesos to enter, which is about $15, which is quite a bit more expensive than lots of the other ones I've visited. Again, there's lots to see and do, so if you don't care about the price, then it definitely shouldn't really make the big of a deal to you, but either way, it's a pretty penny to enter, so it has to get a one out of three for price for me. And last but not least, busyness. I showed up to the cenote right when it opened and there already was a line to get in on a weekday, which definitely can show that on a weekend in the middle of the day, it's probably super packed. Not even letting people in yet. And look what we're dealing with. I guess it could be worse, but it's a line to even get in right when it opens. That being said, the busyness only started to impact my ability to enjoy the snow tape later in the day because it was kind of cramped, a lot of people moving around, having to watch out for people to kick you, and you go to these areas to try and enjoy it and people are lining up again to take their Instagram pictures. So if you go early, it won't really bother you, but it definitely impeded my ability to enjoy it in the latter part of my visit, so I have to give it a one out of three for busyness as well. So all the points being tallied up, the score was 15 out of 21. Now moving on to number four is going to be Cenote Cristal. Now Cenote Cristal is also located very close to Tulum. It was about a 20 minute bike ride going west, whereas we were going north before. So a bit of a different way to get to the Cenote, still really close. And the first thing we're of course gonna talk about is going to be the beauty. The beauty of the Cenote was extremely high in my opinion. We have this beautiful jungle setting which you walk into from the main road and it instantly gets very quiet. Lots of green tropical plants, including palm trees and these massive jungle leafed plants as well. And then you have this 
essentially a really freaking big swimming pool, which has beautiful blues and green colors, especially when you're looking at it from the top and the sun's a little bit higher in. You can see the bottom of the uh, cenote. It feels like the ultimate jungle swimming pool. I had to give it a four out of five. Now let's talk about category number two, which is adventure. So the lookout platform is also doubling as a jumping platform, which is not too high. So if you're a little bit afraid, it's not that big of an obstacle to overcome, but it's still really fun. You can dive in it, flip off of it, or just do a really big cannonball, whatever you may have you. Definitely fun to interact this way. And there's also a little bit of a rope swing at the opposite end of the cenote, which you can interact with a little bit. That being said, it's never anything too crazy, but it was nice little fun things to add on. So I had to give it a 3.5 out of five for these little additions, making it more interactive and adventurous than average. Now we're going to talk about the snorkel ability or snorkel stuff. Now. The water is really clear and gorgeous, so it's definitely worth snorkeling to see, which the visibility is pretty great. But that being said, there isn't too much to see. Sure, you can see some sun coming through the cenote, but because there's no dark, you don't really see the crazy uh, sun rays that I did in other cenotes, especially cenotes like Gran Cenote. And at the bottom of the floor, there really isn't too much to see. I really didn't see any fishes. It's kind of mossy, just more like a raw jungle rather than that cenote cool exploration that you can find at some of these other places. So that's why I think it deserves two out of five. Still worth doing, but a little below average compared to the others. Now, these last two categories, I think Cenote Cristal really shines. The first is going to be the price. Now, I ranked it as the lowest possible, a one out of three. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I meant the lowest price bracket, making it a three out of three for price. Because to enter, it only cost 100 pesos. Now, technically it's 200 pesos, but that's for two cenotes, which you get is a two for one deal. So when you divide it by two, of course, it's only 100 pesos to enter the cenote, which is about $5. And again, we were saying $10 was the two out of three. So it's $5 less than half of the average. Definitely one of the cheaper cenotes you can visit. And now we're going to talk about the busyness. Now I came here very early in the morning and very, very early, I mean around like eight or nine, right around when it opened. And it was absolutely peaceful, tranquil, so relaxing there was hardly any noise at all i was like whispering when talking to the camera and trying to walk around very quietly because people were meditating super relaxing cenote where you could totally enjoy it without maybe feeling like a bit of an overrun tourist uh, attraction so that being said i have to give it a three out of three as well for the busyness in addition to the price you know adding up all those things together we're getting a 15.5 out of 21 barely edging over grand cenote when considering those last two categories which for me personally can play into what makes this note better than another. Now, do you remember before how I was talking about for Cenote Cristal that it's a two for one deal for 200 pesos to enter two cenotes? Now, the other one is going to actually be number three on this list, which is going to be Cenote Escondido. Now, it's actually located just right across the street, a little bit of a bike ride through a bit of a quiet jungle as well, and it's included in this two for one entry price. Now, the beauty for Cenote Escondido is actually a three out of five, so just above average. This one, to me, feels almost like a little bit of a river in the jungle, which is still pretty in its own right. And when the sun is high in the air, you can see some beautiful colors and a little bit into the cenote. But for me, it didn't quite have that magical, super alluring feeling where I can just stare at it and really feel blown away just by the visual appearance of the cenote. Better than average, still had some really pretty things, but that's why I think it just deserves a three out of five. Now for the adventure category for the cenote as well, I would have to give it a three out of five as well. Just above average because there's a little ledge where you can jump off of, but it's almost kind of like, feels more like a kid thing. It's really not high at all. Maybe it's like six, eight feet, nothing crazy. It's fun, but it doesn't ever make me feel super adventurous. Just more feels like I'm just jumping in a normal swimming pool, honestly. Glad I had it, but definitely didn't compare to some of the other ones that we still have yet to talk about on this list. There's also some areas where you can swim with a bit of a different direction, but I think that plays more into the snorkeling, which we'll talk about later, which adds a different dimension for exploration and interactiveness. That's why I still decided to give it better than average with a three out of five for adventure. Now for snorkeling, the snorkeling at the Cenote was one of my favorites throughout my whole trip in Tulum. The water was really pretty. You can see these massive rocks. In certain areas, it gets deeper. You may be able to see some different fish swimming around. I certainly did these different parts of the cenote as well. There's also that little canal, which diverges a little bit, little bit of a way, just wrapping around the main swimming area, which I saw a lot of really cool fish and sights as well. So not the best snorkeling I did, but definitely up there. So I definitely think it deserves a four out of five. Did I say definitely? It definitely does. Now, similar to Cenote Cristal, the price is exactly the same, right? Because it's a two for one for 200 pesos. So for this specific cenote, it's 100 pesos to enter when you look at the half of that cost, which is $5, very cheap. 
So it definitely gets a full price rating of three out of three. And similar to the busyness, it's a pretty big cenote, so there's lots of space, and there were some people there, but no one was being too loud or obnoxious, or maybe not going too touristy mode. People were swimming around, and maybe you can have a conversation here and there, but it's quiet, and there's plenty of space to enjoy. One of the more relaxed cenotes I visited for sure, so it also gets a three out of three for busyness as well. Now when we add up everything together, the total score the cenote gets is a 16 out of 21, barely edging ahead of Cenote Cristal, which we just talked about. Now, the last two cenotes on my list are a little bit further away from Tulum, but I would definitely consider them to be Tulum cenotes because they're still pretty easy to get to. You can easily make a day trip out of it or less than a day trip out of it. So number two specifically is going to be a cenote, Tancach Ha. Hope I said that right. This specifically is near Koba Ruins, which is a great day trip. Check out my video if you want to see more of that as well. In fact, I make videos about all these cenotes. Anyway, to get to the cenote, it's about an hour cheap bus ride, I think about two or four dollars from Tulum to Koba, an hour or so, and you can rent a bike there for a similarly cheap price, which is about a 30 minute bike ride away, or you can always take a taxi, but I like doing things cheap personally. Now, for the beauty of Cenote Tonkach Ha, definitely have to give us a pretty darn good score, because it's a very different cenote than all the other ones I've visited. This is a full cave cenote, whereas a lot of the ones we talked about were semi-open in my opinion. This one you have to go through a spiral staircase going deep into the ground, a little bit intimidating, which adds to the thrill and adventure which we'll talk about later. And once you get in there, it completely opens up and feels like you're in, I don't know, the bat cave, but because there's bats and also it feels like somewhere Batman might have his lair. The water isn't super pretty because a lot of light doesn't get in there. It has kind of a dark, sort of mysterious feeling, but it doesn't blow me away visually. But everything else, you see some vines and greens growing in there a little bit. Beautiful. I would still have to give it a 3.5 out of 5 because it's above average, but it, for me, it wasn't one of the most stunning cenotes visually. Other things though will come into play to make it higher. Now for adventure, this cenote for me has to get a full 5 out of 5 because for the adventure and thrill, we talked about how we enter, which by itself is a little intimidating and daunting, but there's two jumping platforms. And just one of the jumping platforms, uh, the second highest, is about 5 meters or 15, 10, yeah, about 15 feet or so, which is a little intimidating as it is. But they also have a 10 meter jumping platform, which is like an Olympic high dive into this dark cenote where you can't even see the bottom of the water. Super intimidating, but so much fun. I loved the heck out of it. Maybe I'm just a sucker for a good adventure and fun and adrenaline. I don't know. Had to get a perfect five out of five for me for adventure for the cenote. Now for snorkeling, I would have to give this a similar rating to Cenote Calavera in the beginning, a two out of five, because it's definitely worth snorkeling. It's just a little bit below average because you can see down into the water and it's really big and massive and you can see just quite how vast the cenote is underwater as well, which is really cool and eye-opening. That being said, the water here isn't very uh, bright. You don't get those lights shining in the water from the sun, those little sun rays that pe uh, penetrate the water. And there's really not very many fishes to see. Fish to see. You can see some fish here and there, but the wildlife isn't that much to speak of. So definitely below average with a two out of five snorkel score. So now let's talk price. To enter the cenote, it was actually 100 pesos. 100 pesos. I don't know why I put a Spanish accent on that word, which is very cheap. It's about $5 to enter, quite a bit cheaper than some of the other ones we talked about, the same price on average as uh, Cenote Cristal and Cenote Escondido. So it has to get a three out of three for price as well. And then let's talk busyness. It definitely wasn't empty. There were some people coming in, but not very many at all. I never had to wait to do something. I never had to try and finagle <laughs> my way around some people that were taking up space. I had plenty of room to explore and nothing was ever inhibited or hindered uh, by people that didn't allow me to enjoy the cenote to its fullest extent. So it has to get a three out of three for busyness as well. All those being considered, the cenote scored a 16.5 out of 21, which again is just barely edging over uh, cenote escondido to make number two. And number one on my list is going to be the Jardín del Eden cenote, or Jardín del Eden, trying to get my Spanish down a little bit, cenote. And this is actually a little bit between uh, Tulum and Playa del Carmen, so it could technically be uh, cenote for either place, but with only being 30 minutes away or closer to 40 if you take a colectivo, which essentially is like a shuttle bus or van, very cheap that you can take to the cenote. Just tell the driver where you want to get off and he'll drop you off right outside the entrance to this uh, Garden of Eden cenote. There we go, English might be better for me. <laughs> so, the cenote itself, how does it compare beauty-wise? Doesn't blow me away, to be honest. It gets a 3.5 out of five. This is one of those open cenotes. It's really big and really massive, but it doesn't have that beautiful blue, 
brilliant color that maybe uh, Gran Cenote or Cenote Cristal has with the water. There's some prettiness there and when the light's higher you can see some of the rocks. Maybe it has more of a bluish green color without being too striking and imposing. It's cool that's in the jungle. A little bit above average, I give it a 3.5 out of 5. Now moving on to adventure. This cenote matches cenote tankacha in some ways. Overall, it gets a 5 out of 5 for adventure for a few different reasons. One, at one end of the cenote, there's a bunch of different jumping ledges. Some are a little bit lower, so if you want to work your way up, it's not too scary. Then it moves to maybe a bit of like a 20 foot jump. Then you have a tree which you can climb on, which is totally legal to do by the way. That's It's not frowned upon or anything like that, which by the time you get to the top, it's about 30 feet. Not quite as high as uh, cenote tankacha, but definitely really fun and adrenaline inducing to climb up that tree and then jump into the water like that. That being said though, there's other things you can really do as well. There's a little passageway by the jumping area, which goes underneath the stairs that you can swim under if you're a little daring. Definitely wanna make sure you get a good breath and you're not dilly-dallying. It's not too hard to do, but sometimes if you're nervous to swim underneath an object for a prolonged period of time. There's also on the other end of the snow tank, a bit of like a tunnel, which goes by the point where you get off to go under this little system that lets you come out at a different end of the snow tank. It's not underwater, but you're in a little bit of a cave or tunnel, so to say. So that's really cool as well. All that being said, there's plenty of adventure and thrill here for the cenote. Definitely deserves a five out of five, all being considered. Now let's talk about snorkel ability. I would give this not quite a five out of five, but I give it a 4.5 out of five because you can see lots of fish as you snorkel around, which I did. The water has a really pretty color, not as beautiful as others, but it gives some great visibility. There's lots of different rocks. There's parts where you can uh, kind of swim down and through these little rock systems and come back up. So all things considered, lots of fish to see, lots of fun and great sights and visibility. Snorkeling, not quite perfect because the wildlife maybe is a little bit lacking, but still a 4.5 out of five for me. Now price, this for me is the only cenote which got a two out of three for price because the entrance fee was actually 200 pesos, which is about $10. So right in the middle of the order there. And now busyness, coincidentally, this is also the only cenote to, to get a two out of three. I definitely noticed there was a lot of people coming there later in the day. Some were being a little bit rowdy and with the cliff jumping, having a good time, which hey, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Lots of families too, that were kind of sitting on the rocks, which sometimes uh, meant that you would have to go to another rock to sit on and just kind of let your feet sit in the water. That being said, it really didn't hinder my ability to be able to enjoy the cenote because there was so much space, it was so big. And anytime I wanted to jump, there's plenty of other space to jump as well. Never really had to wait too long and I never really was bumping in anybody snorkeling or wasn't able to get to a specific spot I wanted to visit. So it definitely deserves a two out of three. Decent amount of people, but didn't affect my ability to enjoy the cenote at all. So with all those different five categories combined, we get a total score for Jardin del Eden Cenote, or Garden of Eden Cenote, being 17 out of 21. So that is the number one cenote, in my opinion, that I visited near Tulum, Garden of Eden Cenote. So that's the video, everybody. Those are the six cenotes I visited, ranked from lowest to highest. Now let me put a few huge disclaimers in there. Number one, I loved all of these cenotes so much. There's never a cenote I visited where I was like, oh, I shouldn't have went to that one. That was a ripoff. I think for all of them, they were worth the price. It just gives me a good idea of how to compare them based on price and enjoyability. Also, if price isn't really a big deal for you, then you can kind of disregard that category and then maybe look at the rankings and see which one plays in. There's a different category that means more to everybody. So maybe for you, adventure isn't as important as snorkeling, or maybe the beauty is the main thing you care about because you want to get some pictures or just sit there and enjoy the aesthetic of the cenote. So those are just things to consider when looking at these different rankings and ratings as well. If you want to minimize the busyness, always go to the cenotes as early as possible. And then maybe in the end of the day, you can catch some of the best sun time with the sun higher in the sky, shooting those sun rays into the water. And then if you get overwhelmed by people, you can dip out rather than having to deal with them the whole time you're there. And again, if you want to see more about the cenotes that I've mentioned or rated, I've made a video for each of them. So please check them out if you're interested. Also subscribe to my channel to see lots more Tulum content besides cenotes such as adventures, day trips, beaches, and things like that. So that's my opinion, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you've been to any of these cenotes or you have a different opinion or ranking or rating than I did personally. So thanks for watching, everybody. Peace.